man, I'm, uh, this is, this is a really, really good episode. Um, I, you know, for, for you and me, like we don't really need it because like we've never failed at anything in business. Like everything that we've done has just been like, you know, rocket success from day one. So, uh, nothing, mm-hmm. nothing needed for us, but for anybody mm-hmm. else who maybe have a business who might get some, need to get some pointers or connect with people and maybe they should listen. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, for the general population, this is probably really good stuff. Uh, <laughs> you know, us being the exception. Hey, obviously we're joking. We have failed a ton and I'll tell you that failure was also what helped us to, um, find our successes, but what would have been amazing in all honesty is, is a resource that we could have leveraged and, uh, you know, really, uh, use the networking and the community a veteran community, people that relate with us and people understand where we're coming from to, uh, potentially avoid a lot of those mistakes and to not have to go through them because somebody else has gone through them in the past. Uh, it just was an ignorance on my part, specifically, to not understand all the resources that are available. And that's what I love about today's podcast. Todd Youngblood gives, he named a variety, he named a a ton of organizations that you could plug into at any point in your military career to not only get some uh, amazing networking, but just knowledge, right? Just understanding the opportunities that are out there from a entrepreneur perspective or just a transitioning perspective. So I really, really like the, the practical resources I really appreciate the knowledge that there are a bunch of folks out there that are completely willing to help you on your journey as you transition out. Because as we all know, the military is a very terminal career. It it will end at some point, whether it's four years, 10 years, 20, uh, or, you know, a max of 40 years, at some point it's going to come to an end and to be absolutely prepared. The knowledge is what helps you prepare and the network is jet fuel to that knowledge. So it's good stuff. Great information in this podcast. Go listen. You're listening to Filling the Storehouse Podcast. I'm David. And I'm Stuart. And we want to walk with you on the journey to living the abundant life through faith, family, and freedom. Our goal is to refine our why while helping you find yours. Together, achieve our best and highest purpose. In the end, we'll drive each other to intentionally fill our storehouse. All right. So uh, I have to ask Todd for the record. Um, you got a pretty awesome beard going right here but does anybody ask you if you are santa claus i just gotta throw it out you know i i've uh it was offered i got a job offer the other day to maybe be a hipster santa so i'm i'm yes. a little more svelte than the standard santa so maybe <laughs> maybe it was the guy was thinking maybe i could be a hipster santa you know kind of show up you know Oh man, a Colorado yeah. Santa dude. Help, help Very, uh, conversation. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, big, yeah big I didn't. Belly. I didn't mean to uh, to 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 downgrade you. We're on we're on Zoom, so I got you from like the you know the chest up. So I don't I don't see anything down below. So yeah, I mean you look like a svelte Santa. You're looking good, man. You're looking <laughs> Thanks, good, man. Appreciate it. It's very uh, well, Colorado appropriate Santa with the uh, very uh, fit, uh, athletic, fit, yeah, fit, uh-huh. athletic. Hey, I also, I had no idea. I'm excited about this conversation because it touches on a few things that I'm super passionate about. Uh, one being entrepreneurship and two being even more so uh, veterans in entrepreneurship. But uh, we we did a little talk beforehand with Todd and we're just getting to know each other a little bit. <clears throat> Stu and Todd had met. I had not met Todd, but I guessed correctly just based on an assumption of how awesome Todd was. I said, oh, you must be a Navy vet. Nailed it. Nailed yeah, he did, it. man. Yeah, so that, that already fun, sets man. the yeah, man, it sets the it sets the bar high. So being a Navy vet. So Todd, thank you for joining us today. Navy veterans too. And you know, we sit around on those ships all day long, chit chatting for hours at <laughs> end. So the gift of gab <laughs> comes naturally after 35 days straight at sea. You get used to talking to people. <laughs> uh nice. Well, Todd, hey, for our listeners, uh, give us a little bit of uh, of background information on, on who you are and and what you do now, please. Well, I, I've uh, been in Colorado my whole life, uh, you know, grew up uh, in Southwest Colorado, a small town called Norwood, uh, got, uh, got talked into joining the Navy uh, after, after high school and spent four years active duty in the Navy and then came back to Colorado and did another uh, four years with the Colorado Army National Guard. Uh, I, I picked up a sense of service, you know, in, in, in those two, uh, in those two, you know, <laughs> branches of service and just kind of 
kept going after I got out, you know, and, and in the form of volunteering for local nonprofits. So I, I really got involved in the nonprofit community pretty heavy in Durango, Colorado, when I was living in there, you know, helping uh, a lot of different nonprofits that were focused on helping children. And then when I got to Denver, I was looking for some other opportunities to volunteer and got uh, got tied into a couple of great veteran organizations up here in Denver. So the Colorado Veterans Project is one of those. Uh, you know, they help run, r- raise funds and awareness for different veteran causes, uh, really starting to focus more on military to civilian transition and uh, veteran entrepreneurship. So really trying to refocus the mission of that organization uh, to be more focused on helping with resources uh, that allow veterans to start a business or, you know, just create that broader community, uh, you know, within the veteran business and military spouse business communities. Uh, also uh, got tied into Bunker Labs, which is a national organization that uh, leads a couple cohorts each year for the Veterans and Residents Program. So it's open to any military spouse or uh, veteran uh, that wants to, that has started a business or is looking to start a business. It's really an incubator program uh, to help final, formalize uh, business plans and business ideas and really just create a, a broader network around individuals that are starting their business and and want to, you know, ha- have somebody to kind of ru- ride down that rocky road with them. You know, uh, you guys are both business owners and been in business for a long time. You guys know that it's not an easy journey. So it's it's good to have those communities. Yeah, um, we've never had any any challenges or any issues with uh, with running our businesses. It's been oh, smooth man, it's sailing ma- ever since. Making money hand over fist, right. never lost any money on a deal, just crushing it, crushing it. <laughs> it gives you all this free time to podcast. You guys just sit on your money and hang out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Uh, no, hey, Todd, this is this is good, man. So uh, we met uh, at at a golf uh, outing uh, for the Denver or for the Colorado Veterans Project, and uh, I remember. Uh, you are the guy uh, manning the uh, the 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 launch, like the golf ball launcher that you could pay extra money for. The golf like ball the, cannon, yeah, yeah, the golf that, ball that cannon. Thing was, money. That, that thing was sweet, man. Um, but uh, so Bunker Labs, let's start there. Um, give us a little bit more information on on what Bunker Labs does, the Veterans and Residents Program, and and why it's so important for for military and veterans that are that are wanting to start a business, um, get involved in a community like this. Yeah, so Bunker Labs uh, started up about eight, nine years ago, and Denver was one of the first cities they started this in. You know, the theory was you have uh, this great community when you're in uh, the military. You know, a lot, of, a lot of individuals will talk about, you know, making lifetime friends. I mean, you guys are an example of that, right? You know, in, in the military and just having that camaraderie, that community around them. Uh, you know, so it's a it's a pretty... Um, basic philosophy, just, you know, a a program that offers additional resources for veterans and military spouses that want to start a business or have started a business, and they just want to continue to work on that business and grow it. Uh, You know, it gives people exposure to a national network of other uh, of entrepreneurs and business leaders, you know, to really, you know, gain mentors to gain uh, uh, insight from other founders on the best practices to run your business. So it's a peer led group. So they have a couple, couple programs that they do. They do a breaking barriers program, which is just for people that are in the ideation phase of their business, really, you know, don't really know the next steps to take, but you know, it's a great program to kind of give people a sense of what, what you have to plan out to really take that concept idea into an actual practical business. Uh, we have our Veterans in Residence program, which is a six-month cohort where we bring together 10 individuals with various backgrounds, various stages of business, and uh, it's a peer-led session to help everybody work on their business, help them learn more about marketing and sales and and the legal structure and just strategy, business strategy, and just get you know build a broader network. Everybody's everybody needs customers. Everybody needs uh, growth in their business. And uh, kind of insight into the newest and latest and greatest trends in business and whatnot. So to have that broader connected business community uh, around these individuals, we see a lot of growth in them. Uh, we see them. We see a lot of you know this program gives them the ability to take things to the next level. You know to to you know maybe potentially get in front of fa- funding uh, for their business because there's 
there's a lot of great studies out there around, uh, you know, veteran led businesses. And, you know, statistically, they're more successful than just your, your average startup, uh, just because uh, veterans tend to, once they pick a direction to go in, they, they go hard and they get her done. So it's a, uh, it's a good group of, you know, business people uh, to be around and be a part of. Uh, the last program that they they offer is the uh, CEO Circle, and they, they that's for well established businesses. Uh, that again is just they want that to build a broader national uh, networking group for uh, veteran led businesses. So a lot of different programs for for groups that are you know kind of in different stages of business, uh, but you know kind of that core backing is is the network behind it uh, and that community behind it. Yeah, I love that, Todd. And and I'm curious, I have so many questions, but I'll, I'll limit it to one uh, for fear this becomes a conversation between me and you. Although I think ideally that would probably be a better conversation that cuts you out, but uh, but that not aside, true. not true. Um, so you touched on it, but one of the questions I wrote before we really started is, is why are veterans ideal entrepreneurs? And you, you touched on it saying, man, they just typically go get it. But, but what are some of the um traits that just make them so because we've heard this we heard this a uh, couple other podcasts talking about um the it was actually specific to real estate and talking about the foreclosure rates of lending to vets and the the numbers were astronomically different mm -hmm. being extremely low for veterans and and uh, significantly higher for uh, even the well performing operators so i'm just curious what what makes them ideal entrepreneurs and then the follow on to that is why do so many veterans not see that in themselves? Yeah, so they, I think the uh, the basic formula for entrepreneurship just aligns well with uh, some practical experiences we all gained in service, or a lot of us gained in service. There were, there were certainly somebody, you know, some people just slept on the ship and <laughs> you know, and, and and hid downstairs uh, for majority of their service. But there's a lot of folks that just got their jobs done, and I think the pressure of the military, you know, being in uh, you know, myself in combat situations and things like that, there was, you know, there's, you, you get, you get uh, mentally prepared dealing with pressure from different, uh, different environments that are pretty extreme. But you, uh, you also get, you know, just that level of, you just got to get the job done. You got to, you got to, you know, dig in, work a 15 hour day, and you just got to get the job done. You're, you're going to have all all these different things thrown at you every day, uh, you know, in your serve in your time in service. A lot of times you're going to be asked to get things done without the necessary resources uh, that you should have or you you know could have. Um, but at the end of the day, you, you work with work with your team and you, you just you just complete your mission. And I, I think those those core values or that core experience really translates well to the business community. I'm not sure how your businesses are structured or what what obstacles you've overcome, but you know you get you, you get su stuff set up, and you know it's not the outcome you wanted at first. So you have to figure out why it's not you know happening the way you want it to happen, and uh, you know collaborate with uh, friends and business or other resources, and figure out how to make those tweaks and adjustments uh, to make it work right and and make it work well. So just con consistently having to overcome the unexpected and the pressure of business and uh, you know, maybe maybe you're waiting for that check in the mail and just the the mental ability to, you know, not freak out about it, not just give up uh, immediately when things uh, get tough um, are, are those core principles that I think real, really kind of are ingrained in veterans as they start their business. They're just, uh, you know, they're just used to that environment. They're used to that uh, wonkiness and overcoming that and just continuing to figure out a way to make it happen. Um, yep. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go part ahead. two to that. I was curious. No, I was just curious. And part two to that is, is, uh, you know, I imagine part of it is, is what you do is not only encouragement and community building, which I think are other things I want to get into, but, but that, that step of, of helping folks realize that they bring all that skill, those skill sets to the, you know, to bear and that they would be good entrepreneurs, but what's the, what seems to be the biggest barrier, um, and why, why why more veterans aren't seeing those traits in themselves? I think it's a lot, of, you know, I, I see this a lot in the military where there's a lot of great programs like Bunker Labs and other um, entrepreneurial programs that are available to military and veterans. And 
you know, maybe they don't see it themselves. Maybe they think uh, they're not the next Steve Jobs or the next Elon Musk. Um, but I, I think it's I, I think it's two things. One, meeting more individuals that have started their own businesses and 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 learning that they're they're a lot like them. You know, so so to have that uh, business community around them that allows them to, uh, you know connect with that possibility that, Hey man, this is a Navy vet just like me. And he's out there running his own business. And, you know, it, it's just kind of that, uh, just that, that connection, that uh, switch that we need to flip in their brains. Like, Hey, you guys have this, this great skill set to be an entrepreneur. You just need to realize it. But like so many other things that when you're transitioning out of service, people aren't aware of these programs. People aren't aware Nobody's really talking to them about, um, you know, what the possibilities are, what, you know, what it looks like to go to work for somebody else, you know, how to translate your job skills into a, a, a civilian resume. And then, you know, just what those job skills could translate into your own entrepreneurial journey and just good programs to be tied into. I think there's, you know, as a community, we need to do a better job of building that awareness and building those clear paths for everybody. Uh, so that they can participate in these programs and just, um, you know, start on these, uh, start on these roads. Uh, the other, the other last piece that I see a lot of is just the planning piece. They're not aware of it. You know, they get out of service and they need to go find a job to continue to pay their bills because they just uh, bought that new truck while they're in the service. So they, you know, got a, got a wife and a kid maybe already. So they, they can't, you know, they don't feel like they can take the risk of becoming an entrepreneur or, you know, they didn't take advantage of some of the programs getting out of the service where they could work on a business for six months and still get paid by the military while they're, you know, transitioning out of the service. So, you know, there's, it's, it's a big awareness piece in my mind. Uh, that's, that's something we're actively working on at Bunker Labs and with Colorado Veterans Project, just making sure everybody understands how they can be a part of things like this. And this is a great opportunity for us to be on the podcast and you know kind of continue to help spread the awareness and the word make people understand that they're well positioned to become entrepreneurs i think that's huge man i mean i think um you know there's a lot of you know we'll talk to friends who are who are transitioning out and and you know we i feel like david and i um had a pretty good head start uh, on our transition you know we had started uh, some real estate businesses uh, prior to even getting out and we had kind of built out some, some opportunities and, and so, you know, a, a mission and a purpose. Um, but I see a lot of, and, and hear a lot of, uh, of military guys and gals that are, they have no idea what they want to do. They have no idea what their skill set is. You know, a lot of, a lot of men are like, Oh, I was just, I was just a Marine grunt. You know, I, I learned how to shoot bad guys and that's all I know yeah. how to do. Right. Yeah. And they don't know what they can, you know, what skills they can transition um, into but I think a lot of a lot of the the challenge is is finding finding the community, you know, finding uh, the group um, outside in civilian world that they had in military world, you know, that that camaraderie, that those relationships. Uh, you know, I, I came from a, an aviation background, and like the the wardroom, like the pilot wardroom of guys and gals that were you know you know learning how to fly flying helicopters. Uh, like that was awesome. You know, like there's, there's like a strong bond there and then you leave that and then you don't have anything else to go into. So help, help us understand like what, you know, what, how important, you know, a community like Bunker Labs is for veterans um, that are, that are building up their businesses. Oh, I mean, that camaraderie, that community is, is so key and important to, you know, a lot of aspects of life. Uh, you know, for entrepreneurialism and, you know, kind of the, the, the founder's journey, you know, it's, it's really critical to have a good community around you so you can collaborate, but also you can share your, you can have somebody to stand that stands beside you when you're going through these pain, the pain and suffering of starting your own business, um, which is another big factor of, of why, uh, why so many businesses fail. People don't feel supported. They feel like they're on their own. They feel like they're failing because they're not a billionaire, <laughs> a billionaire yet, like uh, all, all the uh, entrepreneurial heroes we have. And it's, you know, that community support is a, a key factor for successful businesses. The, you know, 
in my military career and just after, you know, working in the veterans community, it, it's so key that we share our knowledge with each other too. I mean, how many times have you been talking to a guy you just met and they're like, Oh, did you know about, uh, you know, this veteran specific, uh, funding option, you know, through the Colorado enterprise fund or something like that. And you're like, what Colorado enterprise fund has a veteran specific loan program. And it's two points cheaper for a business loan than going through your SBA. I mean, that's a, you know, those little tidbits of knowledge that are dropped all the time in casual conversation between veterans are just really teeming with really important data. And to create the community, to create the platform around, around bringing people together that has that, that have that data in their brains, man, it's just really, it's really great to see everybody come together and share their knowledge and share their brilliance and, and just help create a healthy community uh, for others to thrive in. And we really um, work hard at Bunker to, you know, create monthly meetup events where anybody can come be a part of the community, collaborate with fellow veterans. I mean, even if you're not in the program, it's just uh, so important to create that broad business community so you, you can find connections and you can find support uh, through your journey. Yeah, I think that's huge too. I think a lot of us, you know, are guilty of uh, the idea that we should have the answers, right? <clears throat> and I think my military career really started thriving when I just was completely honest with myself and was like, look, all these young enlisted folks that are quote unquote working for me are all mostly smarter than I am. So I think there's a great opportunity to you know, to, to recognize the fact that their skill set is so unique and it's so, it, it's so high that just empower them, right. And, and just come to realization to not only empower them, but to come from a position to say, I don't know, help me out. And, and they appreciate that and they grow. And I think taking that same mindset out, you know, when we leave the military and recognizing, Hey, I want to find a community. I don't know. I just don't know. And, and let them pour into you because, you know, as, as we've had these conversations, I mean, people love to share that information, right? People love to share things that they've picked up on. And we just have to be a little bit humble and recognize, look, man, I don't, this is my first time going at it as an entrepreneur. I'll get everything I've got. Uh, you will never, I will never be lacking for effort, desire, passion, care, motivation. Uh, I need you to help me. I need you to teach me. And so many people are willing to do that. It's awesome, especially when you have the common bond of the veteran community. So I just want to encourage folks as they listen to consider, you know, transitioning and going out and doing something different that it's okay not to know, right? Nobody expects you. And, and, and quite frankly, most people know that you don't know, and they're still willing to have that conversation. And it's better to go in there and be like, Hey, I'm an open book. Let's crush this. Uh, and, and there's so many opportunities there. So, I, so I love that. And, and on that, go ahead. Well, there's, you know, just on that, uh, that piece, man, that you can see at these veteran meetups, you know, you, you get, you get a bunch of veterans in a room and it's kind of this interesting phenomenon that happens where, you know, the, the guard goes down, you know, you feel comfortable sharing and, and everybody's willingness to help each other. You know, it, it, if I was, I was wanting to do something in real estate investing and things like that. I wouldn't try to go figure it out. I, I you know, I would do a little research and I, I'd, I'd buy, I'd buy you guys lunch and I'd say, guys, what do I need to do here? What do I need to consider? You know, what do I need to look at? And I'm sure, I'm sure you'd give me some trade secrets that took you guys 20 years to figure out on your own. But, but, you know, just because, you know, you want to help the community, you want to help your fellow veterans, you want to, you know, want to, I mean, genuinely, I want to see more people be more successful. So I'm more than happy to to really dig deep and 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 put a lot of time and effort, energy into ensuring that my fellow entrepreneurs in Colorado are you know can be successful and uh, you know run successful businesses. Yeah, it's it's uh, and, and there's nothing better too than you know I love finding those folks be like, Hey, I'd love to buy you some lunch. And how can I, you know, and, and not how can I bring you value? Cause it puts a pressure on them, but here's ways I can bring you value. One, I could buy you lunch and two, you know, it, it, through the course of the conversation, Oh, you're a real estate guy. Well, let me uh, analyze some deals for you or let me whatever. And there's so many ways to gain from that. So I think it's, you know, the, the, the field is, 
is just, uh, it's plentiful, right? We, and there's a lot of opportunity out there. And there's some vets just absolutely killing it, killing it and doing a great job and, and great people just to get to know and plug into. to. Um, let's talk a uh, transition a little bit. Let's talk to talk to us about some of these new initiatives you're you're running with and and some of this, you know, additional community building and opportunity building that uh, that you're putting together here in Colorado for vets. Yeah, what what stemmed from the Bunker Labs program was an kind of an interesting piece. You you get uh, you get founders enjoying the collaboration and the community uh, that we, Bunker Lab creates uh, for their veterans and residents program. And then they get done with the program. They're like, well, we really like that. Let's let's keep it rolling. And uh, a lot of conversations with a lot of different folks. What's come out of there is is the creation of a, a Colorado Veterans Chamber. So a chamber of commerce that that is going to be focused on bringing resources, bring, building community around uh, veteran entrepreneurs, as well as um, military spouse owned businesses, too, and, and really just really just expanding on what Bunker started and creating a Colorado statewide resource that has uh, local ambassadors in every, you know, major Metro or just minor Metro. If we have, we have a good veteran population of business owners in any one city uh, that, you know, just kind of creates that community. So, you know, we hope it, you know, evolves into a, an annual in you know, Rocky mountain region start kind of a uh, event and conference uh, we hope to bring a lot of other additional business resources, great speakers, great uh, great local meetups, great statewide meetups uh, that really just kind of get us going on the right path to build a very strong veteran business community and, and really layer on the resources necessary for that community to thrive and bring in you know some funding opportunities for people that need funding for their real estate ventures or need funding for their business, you know, whether that's a that's a form of uh investor that wants to invest in a veteran owned business or just, you know, financing through good state, state, uh, state and, you know, banking industry, in, banking <laughs> institutions. Yeah, man. It's one thing I wanted to come, come back on um, that, uh, that kind of David was hitting on uh, is, is just this idea of, of vulnerability. And we, you know, David and I um, have, have built some different businesses, gone some, through some ups and downs, and and um, and then we started this men's mastermind group um, with this idea that that we become vulnerable ourselves and open up to some of the challenges that we've had and that we and then we've seen other men have. Um, but what we've seen is as soon as people uh, become vulnerable and 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 just come out with it, right? I'm having an issue with this or. I don't know how to do this. And then all of a sudden, like the community that you're involved in opens up and says, Oh yeah, that's me too. Like that's I've, I've gone through that or I'm, I'm having the same issue or I knew how to fix that. And it's been really, really cool to see how just this one idea of, of vulnerability um, can completely change uh, for the better. Right. And, and open up. And I'm curious, you know, if uh, in, in in Bunker Labs, in Colorado Veterans Project, the, the chamber, um, this idea of vulnerability in, in business, uh, have you seen, um, you know, someone going through veterans and residents like open up to a point where like it has completely changed uh, the, the momentum of of their business? And do you have any like good, good news stories, like any cool, cool, like, you know, businesses that have just like thrived after going through, you know, a project like this? Well, I mean, we have a couple, uh, a couple groups, uh, you know, a couple business owners in this uh, latest cohort that, you know, they, they got there and they're, they're kind of scaling their business and they're just dealing with the scale. Like, you know, you'd think you're, the happiest moment of your business career would be when your when your business starts taking off, but then you start recognizing, oh, you know, uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> now, yeah. now I made all these sales, you know, now I made, you know, I got all these deals signed. Now, now, how do we operationally um, deliver, and how do we, how do, we, how do I have enough time to wear all these hats? And you can see it when these when these guys and gals sit down and they are vulnerable, like. Holy crap, guys! I, I'm I'm dealing with this uh, this scale, and I'm not really sure how to do it. You know, is anybody else um, 
struggling with it or has anybody else gone through this? And it's just a, a relief when like four other people raise their hands and like, yep, struggling with the same thing or struggled with the same thing. This is how I did it. This is, this is what I did. This is what got me through this position. This is how I took off some of the hats that I was wearing and, you know, uh, you know, just assigned some more responsibilities or found some outsourcing uh, potential or brought in a contractor to, to fill this role for me. Um, it's just a relief to know that it's not just you, you know, it's not just because you're dumb, you can't figure it out. You know, you're, you're the only one who's an entrepreneur who can't figure out how to scale their business. Once you start to succeed, you big dummy, you know, so it's just a relief to know that you're just a human being and that you're just a, going through a, a very standard experience that you're not a, you're not a weirdo for not being able to figure it out. You're, you're just, you're just an entrepreneur. It's just part of the journey. And so that, that vulnerability really is meaningful and it's really, it really just uh, helps people to settle down and, and realize that it's just part of the journey. It's not, nothing about you uh, that you just can't figure it out. It's just, everybody struggles with this stuff. And that, uh, that shared struggle is a big piece that uh, is important to overcome for sure. Yeah. I think that's one of the the superpowers of vulnerability is the fact that <clears throat> one of the things you realize very quickly is, is you are not unique. You're not unique in these struggles that you, you know, when you open up a little bit, you're like, oh, okay, well, that's, you know, nothing special. Like a lot of people struggle through these, whether it's, you know, in our group, uh, men, you know, manhood and issues and being a husband and a father and all these things that we, you know, focus on, but in business as well, right? Like you're not, you're not on the cutting edge of uh, entrepreneurialism and, and the first person to ever deal with these issues, like you said. So I love that when you get around folks, you get vulnerable you also get a, a strong sense of comfort in recognizing, hey, this is the, sometimes it's just normal. Right? This is just a part of growth, and uh, and I think that's a, a huge point. So I appreciate you making that. Um, you know what? I'm curious. What is your advice for you know vets as they look to transition? You know, when when should they start doing something like a bunker labs? Should they? Should that be at like, you know, say you're going 20 years, make it easy. Should that be at like the 16 year mark, 18 year mark? Should, you know, that be at the 20 year mark? What, how, how do you recommend people take action towards preparing themselves and be, to be best suited to uh, make a transition like this? You know, timing's a little bit different for everybody, obviously, but, you know, I, I think, I think the, you, you see a lot of folks that are developing some kind of a side hustle while they're in the military. Um, you know, so I, I think if you have a, if you have a side hustle that you want to continue to grow and, and build out, um, build out after service, it's, you know, the sooner, the better that you can start really digging in to, you know, looking at scale. I, we, we have a guy that, you know, he, he had an idea for a side hustle, you know, and really looked at scaling it and just kind of decided, you know what, this, this thing can't scale beyond me. You know, everything about this business is really just uh, really related to the amount of time that I can put into it. And that's not the business I want to scale. It's not scalable because I can't give myself more hours in the day. So this, you know, the sooner you can really focus and, and apply some of these um, business fundamentals and kind of uh, look through that lens and get some feedback some, from some fellow entrepreneurs about your business idea, your business model, the sooner you can really see if that's something worth pursuing after service and, and you can make into a career versus just having a side hustle and a hobby business. Nothing wrong with having a hobby business on the side, but uh, if, if you're going to look at feeding the family with, with this new business venture after you to get done with service, uh, I think it's really important to put it through some rigorous testing. And we have, um, we have a thing called launch lab online where people can work through their, you know, their idea and kind of look at the scale and look at the, the resources that you're going to need to, to actually build a business from your idea and see if it has the potential for growth after the fact. And so there's, there's that tool, but there's a lot of other tools that are out there to help you with your ideation phase. You know, so, so obviously the, Clear answer is the sooner the better, you know, you can get in front of this stuff and really, you know, go through some structured processes to see if it's a, if you can vet out whether this is a opportunity uh, after service or not. And then, you know, take advantage of those good programs that are out there like Bunker and others 
uh, that can really help you kind of detail out what's going on and uh, see if it's going to be successful or not. That's great advice, man. What about, what about balance? You know, so David and I started, started our business as well. We were still active duty uh, Navy. You know, David was a commanding officer of, of a cyber command. I was the executive officer of a, a large reserve unit here in Colorado. And, 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 you know, our, our business side hustle, uh, we found it becoming like our, our second job, right? You know, we, I was waking up at 4 a.m. And from 4 to 6 a.m., I was working on our real estate job. And then I'd go to the, my Navy job. And then I'd come home and I'd spend a little bit of time with the family. And then I go right back at night to, to working on, you know, our, our other side hustle slash real estate job, right? And, you know, I found myself like just getting burned out. And, and I know like you have, you know, you, you're, you're volunteering, you have, you know, a, a career, you are, are doing bunker labs, veterans and residents, you know, Colorado veterans chamber, like all these things, family life. How, how do, how do we balance it all? Well, I, I think a little bit of the reality is, you know, work, work-life balance, you know, as an entrepreneur, there's, you, you have to kind of have awareness that there's going to be a little bit of sacrifice. I mean, it is, you know, if you're going to, be an entrepreneur, if you're going to run a business, you know, there's, there's another entity in your life that really is going to require your time. And, and you can't, uh, uh, you can't really split yourself into two. Uh, you know, so that's, that's, you know, to achieve that balance, I think it's really, I think it's more, more of not trying to achieve balance, but trying to achieve focus. You know, when you, when you have, when you kind of get into, those two hours that are set aside for your business, you know, you need to be really focused on working in your business, working on your business. And then when you get the two hours at night to work with the family or be with the family, then it needs to be good quality focused time because you, you can't, uh, you can't create more time uh, to really try to balance out that life. So I think it's really, to me, it's more about the focus of, of what you're spending your time on and make sure it's good quality whether it be for your business or be for your family. Um, you know, there's, there's going to, a business is going to eat up some time for you and it's going to take away some of the time that you'd normally spend with your family. So I think it's, it is, it is one of those realities to face, you know, very, you know, it's everybody's goal to kind of build this business, to have flexibility so you can be there for the, uh, the play that your daughter's in or the soccer game that your son's a part of or whatnot. Um, but, you know, again, it's just kind of, there, there's just going to be, you know, building businesses is a lot of work. It's not an easy task. And that's where that community comes in. That's where that camaraderie comes in to have, having the support system. And that that's why it's so, you know, important. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think the, uh, to me, it's, it's more about the, the focus of your time when you have it and uh, really just making sure you're good and structured with that focus and, and, and intentional with it. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. I, I have, I've always, uh, you know, especially as we started doing businesses, I, I'm a firm believer that balance, there's no such thing as balance. It's, it's focus as you call it, I call it commitment, whatever you call it, but it's being a hundred percent present in what yeah. it is that you're doing. And I think that's the true balance. If you can balance your hundred percent throughout the day, I think that's a great place to be right. A hundred percent like the last thing I need is to be here trying to work with Stu or be on a podcast and I'm texting, trying to answer emails and, you know, my, and my wife's trying to call me. I mean, that's, that's, that's not the ideal. And at, at, on the same side of that, when I'm home, you know, I'm down on the floor playing with my kids. And if I got a cell phone in front of me trying to do business, it's just, you're not giving, you're not honoring anything at that point. Sure. And so I, I, I really appreciate how you frame that. Cause I think that the balance is achieved in a hundred percent effort uh, hopefully balanced across the spectrum of your day. Well, and, you know, we look at, we look at a lot of things to help bring, you know, we, I'm a big believer in not trying to recreate and build everything from scratch myself. You know, I, I'm a, I like taking advantage of other programs that are out there to help connect veterans because there's a lot of great programs that are being run. So, a lot, of, a lot of the stuff we do to try to achieve that balance and the reason I can kind of be, wear so many different hats in these communities is to take advantage of what other people are doing well and just connect people to those services. And 
you know, we do that a lot at Colorado Veterans Project where we don't try to, you know, provide mental health services and provide homeless counseling and provide, uh, um, you know, all these direct services to veterans. We partner with other agencies that do that and really help empower people to be connected to the right services. And that dot connecting is so important in the community because we don't want to just create another nonprofit to replicate what somebody else is doing. We really want it to enhance the community and better connect the community and the resources that are out there already. You know, so we're not trying to build everything from scratch. We're not trying to assume so much, you know, you give away the control of how something looks, right? And how it how it feels because you're trusting somebody else to supply a good service, but you're also not having to take the onus on to start up 10 other things from scratch and, and kind of burden yourself with building the community out end to end on your own. So those partnerships, that collaboration, that, uh, you know, that dot connecting is just really critical to help, you know, in your business, in your personal life, you know, take advantage of things that are already out there and already built uh, rather than trying to do it all yourself from scratch. Hey, so what are, what are um, you know, you've talked about a lot of just um, resources and, you know, uh, services that are out there. Um, what what are the, some of the few that you're excited about? What are the, some of the few that you've seen really, really work and are just amazing uh, offerings for, for military, for veterans? As, you know, you've been in this space for a while. What's some of the stuff that people don't know about that, uh, that could, you know, be useful? Yeah. Th- so there's, you know, there's, there's transitional programs uh, that are run by different um, VC groups of, uh, Rockies Venture Club has a, a great uh, incubator accelerator program that are out there for 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 any entrepreneur. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, you know VC backed uh, entrepreneurial groups that are out there. Koretsu uh, is out there uh, with funding and and mentorship for different businesses. Uh, Rocky Mountain Ventures Club. Uh, we have uh, Bunker Labs. Um, it used to be called Valor Bridge, and now it's uh, I think it teamed up with another another group. But there's there's several entrepreneurial focused programs, kind of uh, business incubator uh, programs. Uh, there's leadership veteran uh, that that got uh, started last year, and that's that's an, a focus for uh, individuals that are looking to start their own nonprofits or run currently run a nonprofit organization, just to make sure they have the appropriate business skill set and operational skill set to run a successful nonprofit. Um, there's stripes to bars, which focuses on helping transitioning military come out of the military into aviation careers. So whether you want to be a pilot or a mechanic or whatnot, uh, you know, he's really the, the founder that's really done a great job of shepherding people out of the service, you know, into the field of aviation. Um, you know, Colorado Veterans Chamber uh, is is just a in its infancy. It really truly won't uh, launch and be live until the first part of next year. Uh, but we really hope to uh, kind of dig deep and connect a lot of these organizations that have these programs and be that resource where transitioning service members can can look to to find a, a good path forward. As we talked about, just the awareness of the different paths that are out there and when to start. Um, there's, uh, you know, we, we hope to be that uh, community Colorado resource that just kind of brings all that uh, brain power together and puts it in one central location that so it's easier to find. Um, you know, there, there's some other kind of newer platforms out there called, there's one called pre-veteran uh, that kind of goes along the same lines of what you were talking about earlier, Dave, is just, you know, looking at, looking at how, how and when to start your transitional thoughts. I mean, he recommends two years out. I mean, their programs are two years out for, you know, starting the pre-veteran program, kind of working through some different courses to help you decide, you know, what you want to be when you grow up. And uh, what what might be enticing careers or, you know, maybe an entrepreneurial journey might be a, a good fit for you. So there's uh, there's the, the list is long, man. But I think yeah. that's going to be the kind of the challenge is bringing all that data together in one place so we can connect all these dots effectively for everybody. That's awesome. So for those that are listening to this that aren't in Colorado, are there other um, state veterans chambers? Like, have you talked to other states that have the similar like veterans chamber that's out there? Yeah, we're, we're modeling this off of some other chambers that are ex- in existence today. Um, New Jersey has a great chamber. 
uh, Philadelphia, uh, Las Vegas um, has a cha- veteran focused chamber. Florida has a veterans uh, chamber as well. So we're we're not we're not doing this because we think it's just a you know a, a fun idea. We're we're doing it to model it off of what others have seen some pretty some pretty good success with, and uh, really just trying to bring that uh, you know local awareness to uh, veterans community, but you know, the, the, the intent is to build it into an, you know, and tie it back into those national kind of collaborative networks that, that, that exist out there through other chambers. Cause there's a national kind of veterans chamber chamber that kind of deals with all the other different groups that are, are spun up so we can collaborate on a national level as well. So obviously commerce is done, you know, across the, across the globe these days, it's not just localized to Colorado. Um, I'm, I'm not quite ambitious enough to start a, global veterans chamber but uh you know we we hope to do some cool stuff in colorado and and maybe some other people will pick up on it yeah that's you know i i'm uh i i thank god that uh i had a a best friend who was similarly minded entrepreneurially and we went and we did stuff and things and started business and it was great um that was about four years before we got out of the military but i'll tell you i really wish I would have been more aware of all the resources and the programs that I could have been doing as an active duty uh, sailor Mm -hmm. and, and even on the side, right. Or just, and, and even if my participation was minimal in the business building part and and growing through a a program like, um, you know, bunker labs at a minimum, I would have sharpened my pencil a little bit, would have sharpened my skills a little bit from a networking perspective, right. I would have, my Rolodex would have been open. It would have potentially opened my mind to locations. I mean, the, the things that I've seen a lot of my peers really, really struggle with is where am I going to live and what am I going to do? Now, I was I was extremely blessed to be stationed in Colorado 10 years ago. And I knew from the moment we arrived here, I was like, okay, this is where I'm going to end up because we loved it, right? And so that was a huge, I've, I think I took for granted that, you know, how how uh, liberating and freeing that is. And I'm talking to buddies right now, trying to figure out where they want to live as a transition. Uh, but then what am I going to do is another huge question. And I think the more exposure you get to folks, you, the more conversation you have to train your mind to uh, be networking, asking the right questions, the, the better off you're going to be. So I love that advice. And, and I would say, you know, I, I wish I was plugged in way earlier. I wish I was plugged in, you know, 10, 15 years ago, even though I stayed in 20 years because who knows the number of side gigs I could have started, how much real estate could have been bought, how many uh, um, you know strategies and tactics could have been employed just from, like you said earlier, Todd, being surrounded by people and they're like, hey, have you ever heard of the you know, Umpty Frats Fund? Nope, never heard of it. Well, maybe give them a call. Okay, yeah. cool. And now I secure a loan or something that enables my first property. So I, I really want to encourage folks, and I love how you frame that, just do it. Just get out there, right? Just do something because no matter what, it's going to be a fruitful conversation. You're going to come out with more knowledge, understanding a potentially way forward to do, um, you know, to arm yourself for that transition. Because it's it's inevitable, right? It is inevitable that you will transition out of the military at some point. So yeah. might as well be as prepared as possible. Well, and there's there's programs that you know, Boots to Business is a program that's that's out there. There's the Taps program that's supposed to be for you know transitional pieces and then there's um skill bridge which is a newer program that the military is kind of investing in but i think it's just the nature of the beast you know when you're in the military your commanding officer wants you to focus on your job at hand not not worry about what's next and you know kind of have that distraction so it's a little bit about just raising their awareness of these programs and just encouraging people to be a part of them Uh, but i think it's just like anything else, we can't all sit in a room together and share our knowledge over beer, but uh, we can create a, a virtual community around around transitioning service members and kind of continue to spread the word through through podcasts like this and make sure people are aware of what is out there and what they can potentially be tied into. You know, grab somebody, I mean, grab you for lunch and talk about, you know, what the life of a, a real estate investor looks like is is just a really valuable resource for people to be able to tie into but i mean without without knowing that's an option for them they don't the, you know it's too intimidating to try to get david to go to lunch with them i mean he's way too important he's this 
billionaire real estate investor. Yeah. So, oh yeah. You know, why would he yeah, waste time with time. me? <laughs> He's not that scary, ladies and gents. He's not that scary. <laughs> Hey, for, for, for everyone who, um, I will plug skill bridge like all day long. That program is amazing. You know, so anyone who's transitioning out, take advantage of that. Cause <laughs> David and I both did skill bridge, uh, and, and then we offered skill bridges. I mean, we're not an official skill bridge provider, so I don't know if that can happen anymore. Uh, but, uh, skill bridge is, is a really, really good program. So highly recommend it. Yeah. Uh, Todd. Hey, this is fun, man. I, I really appreciate this conversation. Um, and and I, I love that that we're getting this information out uh, to, to people um, who don't know about it. Uh, what's the best place for, for people to get in touch with you, how they uh, learn more about what you're doing? Where can we send them? Uh, probably the easiest way to get tied into me and, um, you know, is just go to bunkerlabs.org. Uh, if you look under the different communities that are out there, I'm listed as an ambassador under Denver. And I think you can just message me directly from the site. Um, you know, find me on LinkedIn, you know, if you're in business and you want to be tied into the broader uh, Colorado business community and veteran uh, business community, I, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn a ton and, and put a bunch of stuff out there through LinkedIn. So please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and and uh, start a conversation via that medium. Hey, my connection request will be uh, inbound here shortly. So, oh, I thought we were connected already, man. Maybe, maybe I'll. Oh, we may be, we may be. I got to take a look. I got to take a look. Um, hey, so thank you so much, Todd. I really appreciate it. I, you know, I think this conversation is critical. Um, I would love, and I wish, you know, the other, the actually, what I have more regrets is that. As a CEO, I would have loved to have brought people like you in to talk to the command because again, and I, my encouragement to all CEOs and everybody who's in leadership positions, which most of you are out there, uh, these program, the the truth of the matter is that people are going to transition and we want them to be the most prepared as leaders. We want them to be the most prepared as human beings. We want them to be, have the the, the biggest tool of bags that they can possibly have as they transition out and go do something else. So it's, it's resources like this, resources like you, Todd, uh, men and women that have you know dedicated themselves to serve the veteran community, help the veteran community to, to be the best that it could possibly be. And so I, I'm truly thankful for you, for your efforts and, and really look forward to, you know, plugging in more. And, and uh, you know, now that Stu and I are permanently here in Colorado, that is something that we just talked about this morning. Like, where do we plug in? How do we give back? How do we surround ourselves with, people that are so many more, you know, so many levels above us. And, and it's things like this that, uh, that are, are amazing resources. So really appreciate you, brother. And thank you for everything you do. Well, and, you know, just a one last uh, kind of ask for me before I go is, uh, you know, just to get more people involved in the process. I mean, that transitional phase of military uh, to civilian life is such a key factor. And that's, that's why I'm doing a lot of this is, you know, I, I work with the you know, on initiatives to help solve veteran homelessness and, you know, mental health care services for veterans and whatnot. But what we see time and time again is that that key point in a veteran's career where they transition out of the military, if they have a good transition, you know, they, they get tied into these programs early, they have a good transition either into an entrepreneurial life or, you know, a career of their own, you know, a good career that's a good fit for their for them from a personality perspective their, their rate of success is so high, you know, just to continue on in life. And they, they have the resources to deal with mental health and they have the resources to deal and make sure they don't get into a state of homelessness or, you know, just all of these other holes that veterans can fall in, you know, versus Todd gets out of the service. He doesn't know what he's doing. He just sleeps on David's couch for a couple of months, trying to figure it all out. And then, you know, eventually gets into some crap and some financial trouble and everything else, because you don't have the you know, the, the, you have that gap in, in revenue that just kind of crushes people. And so if, if we can all work together to help solve this, build a broader community around our veterans and in that transitional phase, I think we can solve some of those other problems too. You know, we'll have less people that are struggling after service. We'll have less people falling into those holes after service and just more people that are thriving after service. And that's really the goal is just making sure we have a, a supportive community built up and ready for people as they transition out of the military here in Colorado that just can just raise them up and make sure that they have a nice transition and continue to be successful throughout life. Love it, man. Hey, guys and gals, reach out to Todd. Uh, we'll put uh, we'll put links in the show notes on how to get in touch with him. Um, military veterans, 
hey, take advantage of these programs. Check out Bunker Labs. Check out to see if there is a veterans chamber in your state, in your location, your city. Uh, and if there's not, start one, right? Like, let's get involved and let's just what Todd said. Let's 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 flip the switch and let's get this thing program. Let's get it turned around. Um, love it, Todd. Thank you, guys and gals. Share this episode. Uh, talk about it. Post it um, and uh, reach out to Todd. Get involved um, and most important. Go fill the storehouse. Yeah, make it a great day, friends. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate Thanks, you, brother. Todd. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate you. See you. Dude, Todd Youngblood, the man. That was an uh, awesome episode. Ton of actionable steps. And, and you know, even though we have been doing this for a, a few years now, uh, you and I, this this entrepreneur thing, I will take action on the, uh, you know, the advice given and, and reach out into these networks as we continue to build our businesses. Yeah, man. I think it's huge. Like just, just the, just the knowledge that there are these type of communities out there that you can get plugged into and get connected and build relationships with people that can, that can help you lift you up and, and give you advice. Um, you know, let's not all just be failing because we're trying to do it all on our, our own, like bad advice. So Get plugged in with this, uh, with the, these networks, and um, let's grow together. Love it. Do it. Good stuff, buddy. Good stuff. Go. See you. Get it. <laughs>